As you guys know, I just got a KTM XCW300 and it came with a lot of stuff on it. One of the things that it came with was the uh, Recluse Auto Clutch, the same clutch that I have on the CRF450L. And on the, on the L, I just basically use it as an auto clutch, um, but I don't do any really hard technical riding on it only because my L is uh, kind of fat and heavy. <laughs> but when I got the KTM and found that I was doing a lot more, certainly not hard enduro, probably not even soft enduro, more like I can see enduro over there, but I'm gonna stay over here. And one of the things with the auto clutch is because you lose all your engine braking and you don't use the clutch anymore, I thought, well, why not get a left-hand rear brake for this thing uh, and then that'll free up my foot position and I have all my controls on the handlebars. And before you go, but you're supposed to have your brake foot down there. No, <laughs> no. Somebody decided that for you and all y'all just went, okay, well, whatever. Wherever you want to put the controls, I'm cool with that, right? Bikes have had different configurations for the controls since day one of, of bikes. So, just because that's the way they set it up doesn't mean that's the way you have to keep it. So I put the ox brake, hydro brake, left-hand rear brake on the KTM. And I absolutely love this thing. Other than I gotta say the hydraulic brake on this and what it does is you've got your lever up here and it runs down to a line that actually pushes on your brake pedal for you. Um, is mushy. It's like squeezing a marshmallow with a pair of uh, plastic pliers. <laughs> it, there is no sense of feel at all to the thing. Uh, I, everybody keeps telling me, but you gotta bleed it. Dude, I've bled this thing a lot and it always returns to the mushy state. Having said that, it still comes in incredibly, incredibly handy. One of the things you can do with a regular clutch if you're on a hill, and you need to maneuver around your bike, right? You can put it in gear and it'll hold the gear in hell on the hill and you can do whatever you have to do. You can't do that when your clutch automatically disengages when the bike's not running. So having brake on either side is really handy to be able to hold the brake when you're on this side of the bike. Something that I kind of miss on the uh, 450L. Having said all of that stuff as an introduction, <laughs> I, ordered the ox brake for the 20, 2005 through 2019, basically all the CRs and CRFs, right? But not the Ls or the RLs. Those are not included. So that's what I got. This is the cable actuated one as opposed to the hydraulic one. I am not sold on their hydraulic system, so I wanted to go with this and I'm probably not gonna be using it as much and as hard as I do use it on the KTM. So we're gonna do a real quick install of this thing. It should be pretty simple. I'm imagining the hardest, hardest part is trying to figure out where on my instrument cluster on my handlebar, where am I gonna get this thing to fit? Because remember, again, this was not made for the Sierra 450L or RL. Real quick, let's see what's in the box. What's in the box? Well, there's more zip ties, that's a thing. All right, we got a little bag of, little bag of doodads, cotter pin, some zip ties, and who doesn't need zip ties? Here's the actual cable. Oh, feels kind of nice. Here's the lever, Avid. So if you're wondering whose levers they're using, it's a mishmash of different ones. Here is the extension that goes on your brake that makes this whole thing work. Heat reflective tape. They thought of everything. And uh, and more stickers. Put that right, I don't know, right there. I don't know, somewhere in there. And of course, Instructions, ah, ha, ha. so we're not giving out any instructions anymore, right? If you want instructions, you go on uh, YouTube and 
go find them or go on their website. All right, so let's get this thing installed. What they want you to do in step one is to move all your controls in so that the brake lever can go on the inside, which, like I said, is gonna be the hardest part of this whole process because picture they show you on their little diagram is of a dirt bike with no controls on it. So I think we've talked about ox brake, right? I've got their other set and it's a complete another pain in the ass. And of course now this is the split kind, right? So I can't just open it up and put it on. I've actually got to pull all this off to slide this on. The f wrong, the heck's wrong with you people? Wow, I gotta, I gotta really think about if I want to go through all of this. I'm not sure that it's worth it on on the this bike. Now remember, I've got grip heaters on this thing. So I'm gonna to try to do all this without ripping them to shreds. So this little nib is made to go into the uh, grip and keep this from from rotating because it's not on there very well. The problem is, is my clutch lever is going to end up here, kind of high, and in order to line that up, right, it'll it'll be three kinds of wrong. So it needs to actually get rotated here. I mean, I guess I could try to stick another hole in it see what happens. But otherwise that little nib right there has got to get snipped off. So back to what a piece of this is. I have grip heaters on and I've got some other stuff because this is an L. It's a dual sport. People do crazy stuff like that. I'm trying to open up these jaws so that I could get this attached. Obviously I broke the piece off. So there you go. That's my Oxbow rear, left hand rear brake uh, installation video and review. And I did manage to get all this stuff realigned. It would probably look something like that. Welcome back. <laughs> um, all right, so here's the one that I broke and here's the one that I got to replace it. I got the Shimano and as you can see, it's the kind that opens up all the way. Gotta get a little push. There we go. All right, so now I can just move some things around, clamp this on and fiddle with it and not have to rip my grips off again. And if I don't like it, I don't have to fiddle with it and rip the grips off again, again. So let's see if we can get this monster on there and decide if I'm okay with everything living far, far down uh, the bars. I, I don't know that I'm gonna be okay with that, honestly. We'll find out. Go on in here. Like so.
maybe. So I can still get to my horn. Uh, that's, if I do need to use a clutch, that means my fancy schmancy clutch cable is gonna smash. All right, let's figure this out next. All right, now this. On the KTM, the brake for the left-hand rear brake is about the same level as the front brake. And then my clutch is kind of up here. I don't use it for a whole lot, but you also don't want it to get in the way when you reach for your brake that your hand gets stuck on this. So it's about here. Hmm, but that's not gonna work because this is actually a weird shape and I can't get the lever to actually fully engage. Looks like and actually works on an L. I'm sure on any other bike that doesn't have the, uh, all your controls on it, everything's fine. Or you take the controls off and move it inboard. That could be a thing, but then I, I don't know if I can reach them. All right, well, while we're playing around with stuff, let me move this inboard of this whole uh, cluster <laughs> and uh, we'll see what that looks like. Let me show you where I'm at now. Here's the brake. The brake is about where it needs to be. Here's the clutch. And the clutch is okay. It's not bad, I can still use it. But the issue is, is this pod right, hits this. There's no, there's no way to get it any closer than that. And to leave it out here, I'm gonna have to do some slicing and dicing so that it fits the fat part of the bar, All right? Cause I've got tapered bars. There are switches on both halves of this. So it's not like you can just take the back half off and, and make something. Um, I know there are solutions. Some people have made a little extra bar for this to sit on. I think it was Moto Nation did that. Um, I could live without my controls if I wanted to, but don't forget I ride this on the road. So it is nice to be able to get to everything. So we're gonna, we're gonna take a long pause here for a second. I'm gonna really think about whether or not I wanna even deal with this, or if I'm just gonna pull it off and I don't know, maybe I'll throw it up on eBay for, actually I should charge more since, since this lever <laughs> is easier to put on. It's a better design already. Um, I'm sorry, I'm a, I'm a little frustrated. So again, I have this on the KTM and it works really well. And I was really hoping to be able to put it on the, the CRF450L, but this is just, this is just not working for me right now. All right, long pause. Let me go think about what I'm gonna do. And you'll know the answer uh, as soon as you come back. Well, I, I had to make some sacrifices I'm not happy about, um, but I did get it to work. So as you can see, I had to go back to the stock lever. The, the Zeta lever had the adjustability so that you could, you know, put it where you wanted it. This stock lever does not, but it does manage to clear the little pod so I can get to both things. Um, this is an ideal. I should probably cut the ball off so I can have a little bit more free play, but again, it's, it's a uh, recluse and it's adjusted correctly. The other thing I don't actually care for is the angle of this, that it's so far back towards me that the, the mirrors are gonna have to get tilted in this way. We'll see how well that works, but I'm not sure what else I could do with it. So there you go. So anyways, it's on. The next things we need to do, we need to route the cable from the brake 
down past the head and through the body works. It's probably easier to do with the tank and all that off. And then we need to mount the, uh, the brake lever extension. To me, the hardest next part to this is going to be routing the cable uh, so that it goes down nice and smooth with no kinks and doesn't bind up. So let's do that. Uh, basically, we're going to run it along the throttle cables once it makes a crossover to that side and we're going to run it down that side of the bike. Um, I think I'm a little lucky in that the Nomad tank gives you a little bit of extra room back here that you can reach inside. So hopefully I can do this without having to take the tank off. All right. So on this one, we're going to install the brake cable into the brake and get this length correct. And I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. So here's the old one. You can see there's the slot right for that. It drops in. It goes just like your clutch cable. All this stuff is slotted and it all just drops right in. See? There you go. And now it's installed except we're going to do this to this. I just can't show it to you. Step 97. We're going to pull the uh, clevis pin off of this so we can take the brake pedal free from the actual master cylinder and the piston back here. And there's a little cotter pin. Looks like that back there. So we're going to unbend it and pull that spring off. Now this bad monkey goes in like so, right? So that when you pull on the brake, it pulls up on your pedal. That make sense? So that goes like so. It gets its own special new cleat pin. which allegedly fits right in there. You know how Revzilla has the beard meter on how difficult something is to install? I'm going to start the swear meter <laughs> by how many swear words I have to edit out. So here's what's happening. It's going in like that and it's smacking the side and it doesn't want to line up. This project has been off the charts on the swear meter, just saying. something so simple there. Now I had to pound that in there. I get it, you don't want it to come out, but holy crap, you gotta be able to get it on. Let's bash the crap out of this thing again.
there it goes. Well, it fits nice and tight. Cotter pins in. Now we're gonna put this little washer on the back side. All right, that's in. Now we're gonna put the cotter pin back in. And now we're going to install the perch like so. But first we have to take the cap off. And just in case you're wondering, and you're probably going to, this is a seven millimeter head on this thing. You take the old bolts out, but you're leaving the cap on. It's got all kinds of crazy stuff underneath there. And they didn't feel like milling any of that crazy stuff into their head. So you're just going to plop this on top of that with these longer screws. And don't forget your little washers. I'm not sure how I feel about making your brake master cylinder part of the brake system, part of the mechanical brake system, but a million happy customers can't be wrong. There we go. All right, we are so close to being done. Now, this Mishmaro goes down through there, down through there, and in theory, And my theory is starting to look really, really horrid right now, down through there. Okay. Now, I don't have anything tightened up all the way yet. I want to make sure that this reaches this. And we're going we're gonna to twang this. We're going to yank on that cable here in a second. You'll see how much it stretches. But also, I want to make sure that the cable up top looks okay. And if it doesn't, if like the ends aren't meeting, then we need to uh, make our routing shorter somehow. And that's where I think we're at right now. I think I might have too many bends in this that it's not coming down all the way. Now, got a little bit of free play in it, but I, don't, I think that's way too much. So, it's a good thing we didn't torque anything down yet because Something's not quite right. I'm going to add another swear word to the uh, to the swear rating on this project. It's got this big giant gap in it, and this piece here obviously should sit in there. So, so yeah, so let's see a little bit more uh, finagling on this thing. Because right now, I just added another swear word to the swear installation difficulty level. This, so far, everything about this has been a pain in my ass. How about if we do that? How, how ugly is that getting? I guess that's okay. All right, it's not touching. It's pretty close up here, but I might be able to use some zip ties and pull it away. That'll be the next step, right? Routing this so that it's not anywhere near the exhaust. Like right there would be awesome. Okay. And I think that's as good as we're gonna get it. I'll take my little piece of tin foil here. Put it right there. <laughs> yeah, it's just basically a little piece of uh, reflective duct tape tape. 
Now for the next pain in the ass, a part. On the picture it shows this cable hangs down here, but I am finding that not to be true. In fact, not even close to true. But that's not right. What am I gonna do with that? The f And all I'm doing is dropping the brake pedal so that it'll actually, right, move this thing up so that it'll actually stick out the bottom. So this goes on here and in theory keeps the cable from unraveling and going back up to there so that when you pull on the lever, you actuate the back brake at the same time. I say in theory because so far nothing about this has just worked. This has been a fight gone bad from the second I opened up the box. The next fight is gonna be getting all those stupid little cables in that tiny little horrible hole so far. Well, that didn't work. So I'm gonna get as many of these cables in the hole as I can, but it's certainly not gonna be all of them. Let's see if this works. <laughs> so I took the cable to, hey, hey Momo. <laughs> Marley, say hi to everybody. Marley, say hi to everybody. <laughs> I took the cable over to my friend Brian at Basalt uh, Bike and Ski and uh, he hooked me up with a cable that's a couple inches longer and isn't all frayed at the end, so. Anyways, I'm gonna feed this back through and hopefully this will be the end of the shenanigans. Momo, who's a good boy? And there we go. How hard was that? That still works, and then that doesn't work. Oh, I forgot my uh, my spring. Oh, that didn't work at all, did it? I cannot express to you how disappointed I am in this whole system. There are just not enough swear words in the English language. I might have to speak, I don't know, who, has, who swears better? Russia, France, who's the best swearers? I don't know how to make it any tighter than that, guys. All right, now we're gonna squeeze, and that's not supposed to move, right? That's supposed to squeeze the brake. Oh, well that time it stayed. Well, that's pretty cool. Put the body panel back on. We'll get this zip tied in place. We'll, uh, you know, if you ever take a rock to this, you're done. Well, your back brake's done. There it is, finally. So, we're gonna put everything back together and take it for a spin. And, uh, oh, yeah, stop stepping on that. And uh, see how well it holds up, or it doesn't hold up. It's pretty hard to squeeze. 
So here we are in my backyard testing grounds and I, I gotta tell you just from squeezing on this thing I mean it, it works but oh my god leverage I mean it has none I mean leverage in a bad way like you've really really got a torque on this thing to get it to work so the cable version is like completely the opposite of the hydraulic version where the hydraulic version is nothing but mush this thing is like this is just the opposite it's like I'm really squeezing hard in it I'm not sure that it's doing anything so all right well let's go for a spin and uh, see if I can lock the back brake up or if I need to start working on my forearm muscles in order to get this thing to work I'm sorry about the noise the uh, the insert for the Graves muffler fell out somewhere on the highway I don't know where it is so we're a little loud today I apologize for that but here we go so all right we're gonna go up this hill it's pretty rocky and then come on back down it and just fuck unless I crash going up the hill You never know. This hill has all these loose rocks that tumble down from up above. <laughs> oh, like I said, you never know if we're even gonna fucking make it up this hill. This is where you can tell that. 911 bike has gotten a little fat. <laughs> I'm gonna try to remember to use the back brake on this. Going real slow. I mean, you've got to squeeze really, really hard, but it seems to work okay. All right. Ah. All right. Well, it brought me to a stop. It took that long to actually stop the bike. All right, we're gonna use the back brake. Well, it slows down okay. It's not great. Oh, I lost the front end on that. This is like really loose and rocky up here. it's it's all right I'm just gonna leave it at that it's all right um, knowing after having installed it would I install it again probably not I think you need a I think what you need is a uh, a lever that has way better leverage This one, this one works okay, but you've got to squeeze it so hard. There's like no feel to it, right? It's the opposite of the marshmallow. It's like you're squeezing. Yeah, I'm gonna try to lock the brakes up. Right, one, two, three, now. Wow, I mean, you've really got to torque on this thing to get it to stop. So, no, I am not impressed. Um, does it work? Well, yeah, I, I mean, you've seen I can, I can sound it, but doesn't, the feel is just horrible. The feel is just bad. All right, now we'll see if we can ditch the drone here in the trees. John, is it worth 
200 bucks or whatever. Oh, hell no. It's got zero feel. Right? I, I'm just torquing on it, but I can't tell if I'm actually doing anything to the back brake or not. And it's just throwing me all over the place. My conclusion is, I don't like it. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it on because I'm gonna do Washington backcountry discovery route here in a little while. And I'll give it like the full two week test. Again, it's not, the way it is, it's not really in the way anymore. But, but after that, I don't know, I'll probably take it off. It's funny, the KT um, one I've figured out how to work around. This monstrosity? <laughs> no. No. Anyways. So, there you go. That is, uh, that's my review. It was uh, 10 out of 10 on the swear scale, where I'm making swear words up just to describe what I'm feeling. And it was, uh, if, if 10 is a perfect product and one is, it didn't even work out of the box, man, I gotta give this a five. Um, all right, that's my review, that's my opinion. Um, you guys know, as you guys know, you know what, sometimes my opinion isn't worth anything. But, that's my opinion for, for what it is worth. All right, let's see if we can get this drone in here and landed before it crashes. It's, all, it's at 5% battery, which means it's going to start landing on its own.